When running an Etsy shop, one of the most common problems shop owners have is the transfer of data from Etsy to other platforms like Google Sheets. This can be extremely time consuming and give you the opportunity to introduce errors into your data. Maybe you have an accounting software platform that you need to add data to for every sale, or you have an email list that you want to add your customers to and keep them updated over time. If that's the case, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an automation platform called Make to automatically transfer your Etsy orders into Google Sheets. This will give you complete control over your Etsy data. Let me give you a quick demo of what we're going to do today, and then I will show you how to build this from start to finish later in the video. So here is my automation connected up to Etsy, and we're going to put this data into a Google Sheet. I'm going to hit run once. This is going to retrieve an order and add it to a line in Google Sheets that fast. And there you go. The data has been added to our Google Sheet. Now, just to note, there are two lines here and the way this works is one line is for each product that is ordered. So in this order, we had someone order a funny chicken lamp and two Jesus and chicken t-shirts. And if you want to take a total shortcut in building this, you can visit my Gumroad store and purchase the full CSV file. There are actually 71 fields you can capture from Etsy and easily import this automation into Make. Enough of me rambling, let's get straight to the video. But first, my name is Andy O'Neill and I help entrepreneurs like you add automation to their business. Check the description for links to subscribe to my email newsletter and a list of software that I use as a freelancer. Also hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you appreciate this kind of content. I also want to tell you about an awesome new community I have joined. It's hosted by Jack Roberts and if you're serious about AI and automation, this community will give you an unfair advantage with both. This community is packed full of AI automation make tutorials and includes weekly live make co-building calls with myself. Check out the description for more details of how to join and I'll see you over there in the community. All right, so here is the make automation we're going to build and make. These are called scenarios and we're going to start from scratch and show you how to do this. So when you log into make, you're going to be on your organization page that is going to look like this. You're going to go over here to scenarios and then you're going to click create new scenario. Once that loads, you want to give it a good name. Don't leave this default name. So we're going to say Etsy orders to Google Sheets. All right, so this is our starting module, also known as the trigger. And what this is going to do is it's going to watch for Etsy orders. And when an order comes in, this is going to run. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to search for Etsy and right there. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to scroll down here and look for watch shop receipts. So right there is the one we want. I've already got a connection to Etsy, but what you would do if you're new is you would click add and give this a good name. Andy's Etsy connection and hit save. And then what's going to happen is you're going to be asked to authenticate to Etsy to log into your account. And my password was added automatically and I'm logged in. Now I have a connection established with Etsy, meaning I can talk to and pull data from my Etsy account. So we're going to click OK. This is the limit. This is the number of orders that it will check at a time. If you have a high volume, you might want to increase this, but hit OK. The other thing is, all right, this is for testing. I'm just going to hit OK for now. The other thing is right down here is the scheduling. And if you have a high volume shop, you might want to check this every 15 minutes. If you get a few orders a week, you might want to change this to every day and you can give it a time. So five o'clock PM. And so this would run once a day at five o'clock PM. If you do that, then you probably want to increase this to a number that's higher than the number of orders you would get every day. So this would run once a day and add that, add that data to your Google Sheet. All right, right here, I'm going to click Save. Every time you click Save, you will create a new version right here in the previous versions. So I already have a version saved in there. And if I have to, I can go back to that if I mess something up in my scenario. So it's important to save very often and after every major thing you do. So I'm going to click right here. 
and I'm going to add a flow control and I want an iterator. And without going into too much nerdy technical detail, an iterator takes the different lines. So in our example, we had a chicken lamp and a t-shirt that were on the same order. It takes those two items and splits them out into two different bundles, which will create these two lines in our Google Sheet. So we have uh, the product name. Here's the funny chicken lamp, Jesus and chickens. Here's the product quantity, the SKU, the price for each, that kind of thing. So that's, that's how this scenario works. There's other ways to structure this, obviously, but that's how I thought it would be the most universal and helpful way because you can go in here and you can do a report that says uh, how many, how many times did we sell the funny chicken lamp? And then you can add up the quantity and the price that was, it was sold for. So we're going to click on this and we're going to go down here to transactions and we're going to click right there. So transactions with the little brackets and we're going to click OK and that one's done. Next, we're going to go to Google Sheets just right there and we're going to add a row. And so now we need to authenticate to Google Sheets just the same way. You click add, you give it a name and you sign in with Google to get there. I've already authenticated, I already have a connection to Google, so I'm going to bypass that for now. I'm going to do select by path to uh, choose the spreadsheet. And then I'm going to click here and the name of my sheet is Etsy to Google Sheets YouTube. So I'm going to go back to my scenario. I'm going to type Etsy to, and then right there I can see in the search, it brings that back. So now I'm connected to my Google Sheets and I can transfer the data from my Etsy order to my Google Sheet. So the sheet name I'm going to select is Etsy orders. If you go to Gumroad and download the, the CSV file over here, the Etsy orders, this is all 71 fields that are sent over from Etsy. And I left the names exactly just, just like they are in Etsy. So it'll be easy to match up. So this gives you all the fields. And if you don't want some of them, you could skip them or you could actually delete the column, delete the columns before you do the step I'm about to do in the automation. Otherwise it'll mess up your mappings. So next in this step, we've got our spreadsheet, we've got our sheet, and now we have our headings here. Okay. So you can see here are the headings, transaction date, receipt ID, buyer user ID, etc. We need to get the data transferred from Etsy over into this Google sheet. And so the way we do that is we click here in transaction date, created timestamp. This is what I'm calling the transaction date. So that's when the, order was created. What, what we have here is we'd have two color of modules. These orange values are coming from the Etsy and the green values are coming from our iterator. The iterator are these green values. These are going to be our specific line item values. The orange ones are going to be our order values that are going to be the same for our line items. So here's our receipt ID. I'm going to collapse that. If you click that right there, it'll close it up the buyer user ID and I have the buyer name and I have the first line of the address and the second line and the city and the state and the zip. What happens when you drop this little orange for zip, for example, whatever the zip is for this order, it's going to put it into our Google sheet. That's, this is how we add the data to our Google sheet. And then I've got a country here. And then next we're going to go into our specific line item. All right. So here's price. Here's the amount. And then we have a divisor. So when we look at the amount coming from Etsy, if it's a $5 item, the, um, the amount that, that Etsy is going to pass through their API to our automation is going to be 500. So it's, it's really in cents. So we have to take 500 divided by a hundred to get $5. So I want to get rid of that space right in between these. We're going to go to the math function and we're going to do the divide function right there. So what we're doing is we're taking the price amount divided by the divisor, which in this case is going to be 100. So if we get 500 for $5, we divide it by hundred. That's going to give us our $5 value. So it's a little confusing, but there's a lot of uh, APIs that will do that. They'll send it, send you the value in cents instead of dollars. All right, so back over here to our price and then the currency that'll put you in USD or whatever it is. The product name, which is actually the title here. I changed it in the Google sheet. 
the product quantity is right here digital product and so this is going to be a true or false here is the SKU if you use that the product ID and down here we have the shipping total amount and again we're going to divide this by go back to shipping the divisor and then here's the currency and we're done these are these are columns that we're not using so I am going to click OK on this and we're going to save this. So let's actually run both of these orders through. I'm going to put two, which I have two orders in my store. So I'm going to say choose where to start and I'm going to say all. Then I'll get all two of my transactions and then I'm going to run this. So this got two transactions. You can see there's two bundles coming out of this. There's two bundles that were separated and each one of these orders only has one item so we should only see two lines in our Google sheet because we see two that were added right here here is our transaction date and you notice it didn't come through quite right let's go up here and let's format our column to a date so let's go back to our scenario and fix that issue so if we go right here into Google Sheets here's our transaction date we are going to use go up here to the date we're going to use a format date function. All right, so I'm going to backspace over those now. Semicolon, and I'm going to close that. So what we want to put into here is the format of the date we want in our Google Sheet. So we have a month, day, year, month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So hit OK and let's save that. And now we have, so we have two rows already. Let's add, let's run this again, which is gonna add two more rows and make sure our date comes through correctly. Okay, the reason this isn't working is I've got the wrong thing in here. I'm gonna, in our transaction date, I have create, time, create timestamp. I want created timestamp. So we will click the okay button here and save this. And let's right click, choose where to start. Choose, I'm gonna say all, Hit OK and let's run this. All right, two ran again. All right, so here are our bottom two rows. That date came through just like we want it to. Uh, here's our receipt ID, buyer, buyer user ID, city state zip, and uh, product name. All that data has come through into our Google Sheet. And one last step here, we want to turn this on. So we have this scheduled. You can do this at regular intervals, uh, every day, times of the week. Right now we've got this set at every day at five o'clock. And then you are going to save that, make sure you save it, and then turn that scenario on. And now this will begin pulling your Etsy data into Google Sheets. If you ever need assistance with make and building automations for your business, check out the description below for a link to visit my website. And you can book one-on-one -on -one time to automate your business with make over a Zoom call. I would be happy to help you with that. And I thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.